The Orion Factor is on tonight. So we've got larger cones that are about 1.1 grams. Let's go plus with the larger ones. You got it, buddy. A perfect storm of increasing marijuana use, video games, and texting creating major social problems in America. We will have a special report. Al-Qaeda back in Iraq, and that nation may be heading towards civil war. What should President Obama do? Charles Krauthammer will tell us. You'll actually see, like, sounds, potentially, like... You can see sounds? Yeah, sometimes. Can you hear smells? And what is world dominating in 2013? We'll show you the best of what happened last year. The helmet you're wearing, is that sexy? Sure, why not? Caution. You are about to enter the no spin zone. The factor begins right now. Hi, I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks for watching us tonight. Is America going to pot? That is the subject of this evening's Talking Points Memo. As you may know, I believe the increasing acceptance of marijuana among American young people is a bad thing for the country. And now even some liberal media people are agreeing with me. Tina Brown, former editor of Newsweek, tweeted, quote, legal weed contributes to us being a fatter, dumber, sleepier nation, even less able to compete with the Chinese, unquote. And that's true. The stats back it up. Let's take it step by step. If you use any intoxicating agent, your goal is to leave reality. You're not satisfied with your current state of mind. You want to get high, buzz, blasted, whatever. Some adults can handle that on occasion. Others cannot. So it's literally Russian roulette. But putting intoxicating agents in the hands of children can be devastating. According to research by the Society for the Study of Addiction, teenagers using marijuana before the age of 18 are two to four times more likely to develop psychosis compared to those who don't. One in six children who try pot will become addicted, according to the National Institutes of Health. And the latest study by that organization says that nearly 23% of seniors in American high schools right now admit to smoking marijuana recently. That's an incredible stat. So why is this all happening? One of the reasons is because the pot legalizers have made the drug glamorous and the media has played along. Celebrities like Snoop Dogg, Willie Nelson, Miley Cyrus, and others flaunt their association with marijuana. And very few speak out against it. Now more bad news. Combine the drug aspect with the Internet. According to a report by the American Academy of Pediatrics, 75% of 12 to 17-year-olds in the USA have cell phones, and virtually all of them text. 33% of teenagers send more than 100 text messages a day. And 66% of teens say their parents have imposed no rules regarding texting at all. Here's a kicker. A study by the University of Winnipeg in Canada says students who text more than 100 times a day are 30% less likely to be ethical or principled in life. Are we getting all this? Young people in America are combining drugs, alcohol, and high tech to build false lives to run away from reality. In China, young people are encouraged to compete, be disciplined, to live in the real world. Not here. And again, there are very few voices speaking out against drug and tech abuse. This is an epidemic that will lead to a weaker nation. And anybody who tells you differently is lying to you. And that's a memo now for the Top Story Tonight Reaction. Joining us from Newburyport, Massachusetts, Dr. Keith Ablo, a psychiatrist. Here in New York City, Dr. Carl Hart, associate professor of psychology at Columbia University, author of the book, high price. All right, kids and pot. You don't recommend that, right? Of course not. Uh, I don't recommend kids taking alcohol or smoking tobacco. Any intoxicants at all. Bad that's, for them. That's right. All right, so we have some common ground. Absolutely. Any, Should, anybody who can think would agree with you. All right, thank you, and, <laughs> I, and I appreciate that. Um, texting. You know it's an addiction. It's, it's, it's going crazy. Are you aware of that, right? No, I'm, I'm not aware that it's an addiction. No, you don't no. think texting is an addiction among uh, some children now? Well, it all depends how you define addiction. You know, people they, they're compelled to do it. They have to do it. They have it machined in their hand 
all the time. Well, you're compelled to do this show every day. I get paid to do this exactly. show. Exactly. I wouldn't do it if I didn't get exactly. paid. Exactly. And it, that's exactly. Right. It's, so not, it's not a compulsion, it's a business decision. Well, no, no, like you said, you get paid to do it. Yeah. And so there's a reason for you to do it. Is there a reason and it's it does for a not kid? Do, it does not disrupt what you're doing. So if you had a son or daughter and they were I 15. Do. I, I have three. I have three. In their teens? Uh, two in the teens. That's okay. Right. And if they're texting more than 100 times a day, you don't have a problem with that? Well, the thing is, I, I have a kid who is in the Ivy League institution. He's a teenager. Uh, my main sort of concern is how well he does in school. He texts quite a bit, but yeah. he also gets all A's in school. Yeah, but I don't know if that's if the, uh, you want the whole child to develop, not just precisely. The academic. You just said it. Right. That's precisely. And it. I don't know if the texting is leading to that. All right, Dr. Abloh, you see it a little bit differently. Um, I, I see a coming storm here, a tsunami building with the drugs, uh, the soft drugs, the pot and uh, the high-tech abuse. I, I think it's abuse. I think if a kid's texting 100 times a day, that's abuse. Go. Absolutely. This is a perfect storm. We've talked about this, Bill. I've written about it. You've written about it. Bottom line is any time you attempt to exit the real world in favor of a fantasy land where your emotions aren't troubling to you, there's a price to pay for that. Those are called addictions. Texting, the incessant use of Facebook, the use of marijuana now, which parents, by the way, they're caving. They're telling their kids, oh, it's just marijuana? Oh, you just sell marijuana? I don't know how many, I don't know how many parents would do that. They, I, I, they I think are. That, uh, maybe, look, they are. There, we, know, we all know there are permissive parents, but I, I still believe in this country they're a minority. I think parents well, don't want their kids involved with intoxicating agents. Most parents, most responsible parents. There are well, parents can, who are addicted and who are irresponsible. But, but let's, stay on, let's stay on the texting and the, uh, and the uh, games. Because the study yes. shows from Winnipeg, interesting study, that the parents, they're lost here with the texting. They're, they're not really on this. And remember, texting, texts can be erased right away. So you literally have to be following your kid around all right, to know yes. what that kid's doing and, and the interaction. Therefore, the children are bold now. The children are doing things that yeah, of course. you would never do on the telephone because you might be overheard. Go ahead. Well, this, this is the Trojan horse because even the people who can identify this as a huge problem are using texting. Now, you can say, well, they're using it less, but they're still on the drug. And we're going to find out that this disempowers people. It deposits them in a virtual world where their feelings don't need to have integrity, where their intentions can be the same as a pot smoker's, non-motivational, looking for the next high. And you say to that? Well, I, I, I don't know what to say because it's... Uh, it, uh, no, no, hold but on. Let, hold let on. me frame it, though. <laughs> I think we're becoming a weaker nation because of all of this, particularly under 30. Under 30 is going to have to take over someday, all right? And, and they are lost in this world. Bill, let's, 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 let's slow down. Let's think about the last three guys who occupied the White House. They all smoked marijuana in their youth, <laughs> right? The last three guys. And not chronically. Well, one, one didn't inhale, well, and the other... Wait, hold up, hold up. You didn't believe that when he said I, that. I believe everything the president's <laughs> telling me. All right? Uh, Bush, he, was, Bush was an alcoholic and, and, and dealt with it, and Obama, we're not exactly sure how serious he was involved. <laughs> but as I said in the talking point, some can handle, but some cannot. That's exactly And the prevalence right. of this is overwhelming now. So you're going to have a lot of casualties on the battlefield. That's not true. Let's talk about the statistics. Let's talk about the data. In 1978, uh, the, the, the recent number of marijuana smokers in the 12th grade, it was 37% of the 12th graders said that they smoked marijuana recently. Today, that number is down to 22%. Not and the it, number I just gave. Well, your number that's is seen, wrong. That's seen, no, wrong. your number is wrong. Take it up with the National Institutes no, of Health. All right, look, they're I, the one that, that I put am it a out. council member on the National Institutes of Health. Your number is wrong. I'm telling you, it's 22% of, of, of seniors who smoke marijuana in the past well, month. Right. That's a I, fact. To, I doubt it's the fact because no, we're no. Not, we don't get this wrong. <laughs> no, these these researches that's the same, but, wrong. All right. Well, we'll we'll call them again, and tomorrow uh, I will say yes or no. Go ahead, Dr. Ablo. Yeah. Look, the doctor has it wrong. The the bottom line is this is not 1978. 
1978, people weren't carrying cell phones. They weren't using Facebook. <laughs> they weren't depositing themselves on YouTube and being surprised by being arrested after beating somebody up on YouTube. They're like, wait, this is the real world? I'm going to get arrested for this? I thought it was all fun and games. We are weakening our young people because we are suggesting to them that it's okay to be high all the time. It's no surprise that we now have a government. That. I don't know if we're well, suggesting that. I think, I think we are because we're saying have a Facebook account, use marijuana, text, and by the way, we have a government right. there that's isn't telling enough people not to have autonomy. It's the difference between not condemning and encouraging. And by the way, Dr. Hart is correct. It's 23% of seniors in high school that say they are smoking marijuana on a regular basis. That's a lot. That's a lot. Would you say that's a lot? It is nowhere near the 37% we saw in 1978 to 1980. So I, I'm telling you that we, we need will. to make sure we keep this in perspective. All right. All right, good debate. Thank you. Uh, next on the rundown, Juan Williams, Mary Catherine Ham, on why so many liberals are okay with the drug culture while conservatives a little askance. And later, the best of Waters World 2013. We have some wild stuff to show you. Upcoming.